Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is among us. He is and always shall be. Brethren, walk as children of light and try to learn what is pleasing to our Lord. This morning, I would like to draw our attention toward the epistle, the epistle lesson that was read today, where St. Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus. He is writing to the Ephesians. He writes in verses 15 and 16, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. St. Paul urges us to be smart with our lives, not to waste time, the time that we have here on earth. Time and time again, I hear from our faithful as they are nearing the end of life. I wish I had a little more time with my family. I wish I had spent a little more time with God. Truly something powerful. Time is so precious. Let's talk a little bit about time today. The Bible is full of the awareness of time. The writer of Ecclesiastes says God has made everything beautiful in his time. There's a time for everything and that there is a right time for everything. The prophets speak of the appointed time of the Lord, the time for judgment and destruction, or the time for mercy and salvation. Jesus and Paul, St. Paul, speak repeatedly about the importance of time. And today, St. Paul reminds us again to the church of Ephesus, time is too precious a gift, too scarce a commodity to be squandered. It is one of the most important things that we have in our lives. If we waste it, we lose more opportunities than we know. Each moment is an opportunity for true relationships, for prayer, for kindness, for self-control, for personal and spiritual growth. St. Paul wrote to the Colossians, make the best possible use of your time. Interesting, if you give three different people a suitcase of the identical size, And usually, one will succeed in filling that suitcase far more items than the other. Our days are exactly the same. But what a difference in the way we each pack our day. First, how can we make the most of our time? How can we make the best possible use of it? We must learn to use our spare moments. There's a well-known author and educator, John Erskine, said that he learned the most valuable lesson of his life when he was 14 years of age. His piano teacher asked him how much he practiced each day. He replied that he usually sat down for an hour or more. Oh, don't do that, warned the instructor. When you grow up, time won't come like that and long stretches like that. Do your practicing in minutes whenever you can find them five or ten before school, a few after lunch or in between chores. Spread it throughout the day and music will become part of your life. Erkstein said later that he applied this principle to his writing. He wrote nearly all of his famous work, The Private Life of the Helen of Troy, on buses while commuting between his home and university. I remember the story of Father Stanley Harakis, our professor, who said the only way as a full-time professor and full-time parish priest that I could finish my dissertation for my PhD, I would have to wake up each morning in little bits at 5.30 in the morning and do 15 minutes or 30 minutes of work to complete the whole. Some of the busiest people that I know get the most reading done because they always have a book, a smartphone, a Kindle, handy, nearby, always when there is an occasion to wait. Now think about it. Apply this to our spiritual lives. Apply this to prayer, reading the Scripture, learning about our faith. I remember early on when I was a young priest, a bishop, we were meeting with our clergy, and the bishop was telling the clergy, don't tell me that you all don't have time for prayer. Pray when you're in the car. Pray when you're going for a walk. Pray when you're gardening. Pray when you're cleaning the house. He goes, I don't care when you pray, but pray. Those small 
little moments, making the most by using those spare moments. Now is the time. You can always procrastinate in starting your prayer routine, reading Scripture, getting a little more focused, or spending quiet moments alone with God. But now is the time. Today is all we have to work with. If we have anything important to do, I urge you, do it now. The past is gone and the future is not here. Establish a priority. Make the most of time by using spare moments, by doing it now and by establishing a priority system, putting first things first. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, and this happens quite often, I admit and confess, I struggle. The only way that I can make sense of things is to write my to-do list down on a piece of paper and start tackling them one by one. Not waiting for tomorrow, but starting now in the present. And that also counts for making more time for God. By prioritizing the tasks, the lists, the to-dos, we can properly spend time on other things, things that build us up, family time, personal relationships, prayer, worship. This is the kind of prioritizing our Lord asks us to do when He says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The question I ask you today, what are we busy about? Our Lord came to teach us truly important things in life about which we ought to be busy. In the service of the autocracia, the blessing of the loaves, we sing a beautiful hymn at the end. Those rich men have torn poor and gone hungry, but those who seek the Lord never shall want of any blessing. Our Lord tells us, labor not for the food that perishes, but labor for the food that endures to life eternal. Seek the Lord, and we shall never have want. So if you want to make the best possible use of that most precious time, follow the plan. Use spare moments. Don't procrastinate. Do it now. Neglect the unimportant things. Establish the kind of priority system taught by Jesus, putting first things first and tackling them one at a time. There is a time for us. There is a time for you. For some, this year will be a fulfilling, satisfying time. Some will achieve success and happiness. The real time is beyond time in resurrection, in eternal life of God, which is a gift. We are destined, St. Paul says to the Ephesians, to be full of love and eventually be, be, to be united with God in joy, which is beyond time. My brothers and sisters, we have three weeks, 21 days left till the nativity. Prepare today. Light that candle. Walk not in darkness, but in the light. It all begins right now. As we approach the nativity, let us open our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls. Let us use each spare moment, not for trivial things of this on earth, but rather let us use those spare moments for things that enrich us that help us on our way as we journey to the nativity in our Lord, God, and Savior. I pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen.